Hey guys, this is Renee, and today, um, first of all, let me just say, I got my tripod fixed, or it just started working again, I don't know, I think it was jammed up, and now it's not, so I'm using my tripod, which means I have free hands, and you have no shakiness, which is great. So, let me show you what I'm going to show you today. I recently just made this card for my mom's birthday, and let me just bring it up close. This is what it looks like, and you can see already, you can see that glitter and that shine on the wings, and I hope you can see here along the edge of the card, you can see that foil shine, it's like a foil shine almost. Now I'm only showing you the coloring on this card, um, the coloring technique, because the rest of it is really, 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 really easy. Um, it's just dyes. This right here. Um, and so you can see the lettering is shiny too. I just hand painted that. Oh, yeah, so that's the same technique. Um, these are paints that I made myself um, from a mixture of um, Mika powders that I had and a mixture of mineral eyeshadows. So that's what I'm going to teach you how to do today. Um, the rest of it is just these are all from Little Bee Designs. These are the circle dies that they have. And then uh, that's what I used to cut, cut all the circles on this card. And then I just used the, and you can see everything, all the colors have glitter in it. You can see the shine on the leaves and the flowers. And different um, materials have a different quality of shine. So I'm going to show you how to color with this technique. I'm just going to put that aside. Now, you're going to need... Um, now, this is similar to... Um, oh, what are they called? Twinkling H2Os. I will tell you they are not quite the same thing. Um, you can't really... You don't really get a watercolor effect with these. But... With the Twinkling H2O's, from the, I do have one of those right here. I have a purple one. And from what I can see, you do not get the same shine with these. Let me just show you real quick. I've got some little swatches there. Just ignore those. So let me just grab my paintbrush. I've got a little tiny thing, literally a little tiny thing of water. So with the Twinkling H2O's, these are great, by the way. These are beautiful. Um, and, but they're a, different, they're a different technique altogether. So you're going to have, like, you can see it's, um... Let me zoom in, because then you might actually, you know, be able to see. You can see it is quite watery, and it spreads. Now you can see it does have quite the shine. But it's really a watercolor. And you'll have to forgive me, this is not watercolor paper. And you'll see how that color just continues to spread. On the other hand, what I'm going to show you, this is one that I've already got made. So they just, they reactivate with water. And these um, Twinkling H2O's do not show up very well, some of them anyway, the one that I have. I only have one. Um, on dark colors, but they do show up very nice on white. These show up very nice on dark color paper as well. So, that is the paint that I'm about to use. And you can see it doesn't, like, it doesn't have that water color quality where it, I mean, okay. It does spread a bit, but it's the dye and it doesn't spread. So it spreads a little bit, but you can see... This is the Twinkling H2O, which doesn't have, like, it has a bit of a sparkle, um, but not nearly as much as this right here. And you can already see the foil shine that's on that. This is what I'm showing you how to make today. So, the Twinkling H2Os are nice, though, and I would like to build my collection. This little water thing I have is way too small. That's fine. So I'm going to show you the actual coloring part after. I want to show you how to make the colors. So there's a few different things you can use. I'm going to zoom out again. 
Oh, yeah, that's fine. There we go. So, um, this right here, this is an eyeshadow. It's a mineral eyeshadow you can get off eBay. And I got 12 of these for $4, I think. Now, they do come with some glitters. That's okay. They're microfine glitter, so you can save them to use on different projects. So that's, it says Lan May. Now, all you need to do is type in mineral um, eyeshadows in eBay. You'll get a bunch of these. So this is one thing I'm going to show you. Um, there's other things you can use too. So this is, and these are more expensive brands. This one was on sale for a dollar, so I bought it. This is Fresh Minerals, and you can see it has a lot more in it. And you can, this is what you want to look for. You want to look for something that has a, a high pigment load. So if I were to swatch this, I just dip my finger in it. If I were to swatch that on my hand, you'll see it has a high pigment load. It's very, it's a very, oh, you can't really quite tell from this, but the color is very bright or very thick. It's a, it's a good pigment quality. It's thick. Um, and there's a lot of shine to it. So that's what you're looking for. You don't want to look for eyeshadows or powdered eyeshadows that have a lot of talc because they're not going to work. You're going to get a dull um, look. You're not going to get that nice colorful pop that you're looking for. ELF has them too. These are $3, um, but every now and then ELF has 50% off entire store sales. ELF has really nice makeup. I don't wear a whole lot of makeup, but I bought a whole bunch for some strange reason. And you can see this is the same thing. It's a high pigment load. So, the other thing you're going to need is gum arabic. So you need this. I got Now this is the powdered one. You can use liquid, that's fine. Um, the technique is going to be slightly different. But this is the powdered gum arabic. And what it says here on the back, it says directions. Add dry gum to pigment in ratios of one part gum to four part parts pigment. So there's one other thing you're going to need. Well, okay, there's a couple, but one of them is a container, so it doesn't really count. You're going to need uh, like a little spoon or something to pick up the pigment with. You're going to need a container. I'm just going to put mine back in this. Uh, and what I like to use to mix them is little bags. And that is because it will, <laughs> it's a lifesaver because it's going to save you from making a huge mess. So, what we're going to do, I kind of eyeball this because I'm not measuring it out from, if I was using a lot of um, eyeshadow, I would measure it with a spoon. So I would do four spoonfuls. Although you can kind of see how many is going to be in it. So, this would be about four, uh, four or five spoonfuls in here. So, I'm just going to dump all the powder into the baggie. There might be some a little bit left behind. <coughs> it's not a big deal, don't worry about it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to want to clean off your little spoon. You want one, and we're going to make it one heaping, spoonful of your gum arabic. And I think maybe I need a little bit more. Then you want to seal up your bag and you want to mush it all together. And you want to make sure that it's all uh, all mixed in there. So you want it to be even. So feel free to rub the bag. Uh, make sure there's no holes in your bag because if there's holes in your bag you're going to get eyeshadow everywhere. It's going to feel like there's not much in the bag. That's okay. Don't worry about that. Um, it'll change once you put in the uh, water. So now that it's all mixed up, we're going to add that water. So we're going to start with a couple of drops. It's okay if you add a little too much water because um, you're going to leave these to dry and the water is going to uh, absorb out. The ratio that you want to make sure is correct is the um, pigment to gum arabic. 
Now what you're going to do is you're going to want to rub that again. You're going to want to mix it all together. You're going to find that some of them, um, they don't like to mix with water very well. And that's because they're, I think it's hydrophobic they're called. You'll find some eyeshadows are like that. They're designed to be that way. So that when you sweat, they don't come off your face. Or your eyes. So all you do is you mix it up. And you'll see already it's a gold liquid in there. It's going to seem like there's not much in there. And that's because this is a really small eyeshadow. These china ones are really, really, really tiny. So then, you want to push all the stuff toward the bottom of the bag. We're going to cut off the corner. Just like that. Make sure all the stuff is away from the part you're cutting. And you're just going to turn it over. And the corner that you cut off, you're going to put that so that we're going to pour out the liquid into the container. Just like that. And just squeeze the bag to make sure you get it all. And that's it. That's all you do. Like I said, this one doesn't make a whole lot because these are really small. You can keep pushing as much of the gold toward the uh, bottom as you'd like. You might get an extra drop or two. You don't need a whole lot to color though. So that's what you get. Now what you do is you have to put this aside and you have to let it dry completely. These ones, there's not much there. It won't take very long. And you can already see that color that's on my hands. So this is the color it's going to be. And it's this gold color right, right here. So that's that. If you've got one of these ones, and I'm not going to make this color because I already have a bronze. Uh, I think I'll make this purpley color. Yeah, so what you're going to do, I'm going to turn it over and bang out some of the powder into the cover. Now you're going to need an empty container. And I just happen to have some... These, these are like little sample containers. So this time we're going to measure it out. So we want, we want as about four of those little teaspoons. And I'm just going to measure it directly into the bag. And that's what happens if you do it too fast, you make a freaking mess. A big old mess. So we've got roughly four scoops of pigment. And now the same thing, you're going to want one spoonful of gum arabic. I think I want a little bit more actually. I'm going to double it. This is a fairly big container so I'm just going to double it. Oh well, actually they come with a good bit less than you think they have. Well, we'll just leave it how it is. So, like I said, you just mix it up. Add your water. way too much water. Oh, no, I never. And 
So you want to make sure it's mixed really good or really well. Sometimes the powder gets stuck in a corner. And so that's that one. And leave them open while they dry. And the last way to do it um, is with these here, which are Mika powders. Which are similar to Pearl X, but they do not have a binder in them. So we are going to make... Uh, uh, let's make a silver one, because I don't have a silver. And we're just going to, yeah, that's, I only have dark silver, so that's what we're going to make. And again, I need a container. I have one left. And we're going to use our spoon. And this time... I'm going to double the recipe. So I'm going to use four spoonfuls of pigment. Roughly. Or eight spoonfuls of pigment. That's four. You can get these at Coastal Scents or TKB Trading. Coastal Scents, um, I mean, you get a decent amount and it's a dollar. Uh, it depends on the color, but they range from a dollar to two dollars. And I think you get about a, um, a teaspoon, which is not bad. So we're going to add two spoonfuls of gum arabic. And again, you're going to mix it together. Just knock the corners so the powder falls out. Rub it together. And add your water. You can try mixing it with a palette knife. It takes forever. But you can do it. So you want to make sure they're really well mixed. That's probably fine.
And I think that's going to be a really, really pretty color. So that's it there for now. So I'm going to put that aside to dry. Now there is one more way that you can do these and um, it's how I made oh, it's gone. It's how I made this one here and that's to take um, liquid watercolor and you add shimmer to it. Uh, you can't really do it with the white one. The white one makes it too opaque. It doesn't work very well. But the other colors are transparent and that's what this one is. It's watercolor with shimmer added. Now, let me just get rid of my mess and we'll show you how to color. And I'm just going to get rid of that glitter. So I'm going to show you. I've already got an, an image stamped. And it's right here. This is a close to my heart image. I'm going to zoom in. A little bit out so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to use... Uh, bronze because we're going to have a nice bronze cup and we're going to use pink for the cherry and we're going to use purple for the ice cream because why not that's one of those Lan May ones and I don't know maybe I'll use this pink I'm not sure so first of all we're just going to grab our paintbrush and we're going to wet the watercolor and you guys already seen the brown one or the bronze and all you do is you get it wet, you get the paint on your brush, and you paint in the lines. And you can see you don't need to reload for quite some time. And it just glides on. I mean, you're not really looking to do shading or anything with this. It's going to be a solid color. You can still you can see I still haven't needed to reload the brush. And I think I can even finish the bottom without reloading. And these dry fairly quick. So there's my bronze bowl. And you can see the shine on that. So now we're just going to And that was one of these but in bronze so that was one of the pure Mika powders now we're going to do our ice cream Oops. so I'm gonna use purple because it's a really pale purple um, and this is a land made color so we're just gonna paint in the ice cream and of course you use whatever colors you want to use There we go. And I'm just going to do the bottom um, of that too because I don't want to use too many colors. Oh, I'm coloring off the screen. Sorry. And now we're going to do the uh, that color is probably too dark for ice cream. Oh well. Um, let's do pink for the icing. It's this color pink here. So we'll call it strawberry sauce. And then this reddish color, oh, it's an orangey red, but whatever. And we'll use that for the cherry. And it looks a little bit unfinished here, so what I'll do... We'll use this color to fill those in. And this is the color I used on that card. Oh, I'm 
running low on this one, actually. Oh well. What can you do? And that's it. That's what you get. It's a really shiny. It's like foil. You could make um, almost metallic looking embellishments with this stuff. That's it. That's the project. That's what I wanted to show you. Um, and like I said, you can use it to color a card like this. And I have yellow. I have green. I have blue. Uh, and you can make any color you want. Anyway, guys, I know this video is long, but thanks for sticking around. And I hope I was able to help you out. Thanks. Bye-bye.